Hello and welcome to a short video about my actual tiny little project. It's again in the context of arcade gaming and as several projects before it's related to some way to interface old emulated software with actual hardware. This time I have a look on uh, something, something specific about motorized cabinets. Back in the old days there were of course a lot of uh, upright cabinets. This was somehow the, the uh, most usual flavor so to say. Most cabinets were in this style. But some exotic cabinets were to sit down and even have motors that, that uh, moved the player around. One famous example for that is what I'm looking currently at, is uh, the, the Afterburner 2 Deluxe Cabinet. So this is, was really something where, uh, that, that gained some uh, um, uh, attention. It was a huge cabinet with a lot of, of lights going on and, and really the player could sit inside uh, in a kind of cradle and uh, would be moved during gameplay uh, along uh, vertical and horizontal axis. So but really a kind of um, impression and a great thing to, 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 to have and yeah, uh, those cabinets are not built anymore and quite rare, the original ones those days. So the idea was, uh, wouldn't it be possible to somehow let this be recreated based on emulated original software? Because you need to know that the, the control over the hardware, over the motors and, and lights and whatsoever, was implemented in the original game core, in the ROM files. Exactly the ROM files that we, at, at the actual days, using for emulation in stand-up cabinets. So they carrying inside really the capability of, of moving those, those cabinets and motors as they did in the old days. The, the real challenge here is to find a way to somehow hook on the right places inside the emulated software and the emulation and somehow uh, lead out the, the, the command lines and, and, and instructions that came from the game to the hardware, to the actual hardware. And this is what I've done to a certain degree. It succeeded. I call it a small scale proof of concept because if you're not sure if things work, you don't want to spend a lot of money. So I used what I had around and this was uh, these tiny little NEMA 70 motors which are usually used for building uh, 3D printers. They also find their, their place in uh, small CNC machines. The great thing here is that this can be easily upgraded because the way those stepper motors are controlled, uh, those tiny stepper motors are controlled, is exactly the same like the bigger ones. So for example, there are drop-in replacements, and, and by the way, those are stepper drivers. They, they, uh, how shall I say, they are in between the microcontroller and these motors and this uh, stepper drivers and the motors can just drop in replaced with really huge big motors from huge CNC machines. There are NEMA 32 or 34, I'm not quite sure, I have seen with 12 Newton meters of holding torque. They are really huge, they are used usually for really big CNC machines and I've read from a, from a person who utilized them to, to move around heavy doors and gates that are uh, up to 300 kilograms, which is uh, approximately 600 pounds. So, the side of the motors is here not the challenge. The challenge is really to hook in inside the original software and the emulation to lead out the controls and, and uh, interfacing it with the hardware. And this is what I've done. And it succeeded to a certain degree. Uh, I have to admit that uh, right now I still have performance problems because I'm currently using uh, uh, this kind of, of line. This is an, an USB serial interface, which is not really up to the task. Uh, there would really need uh, some faster um, kind of uh, connection, but uh, this is where I started at, and I have no idea when, why I, uh, where I began, uh, if it will work or not. So it, it works to a certain degree, but you will see later on when we're running the game and having a short demonstration how, how the, the old game emulated uh, interacts with the hardware, uh, you will see that the game really runs slow and this is because of the bottleneck of the, of the serial interface. But there are alternatives to that, there are other hardware interfaces that are much, much uh, faster or, or more appropriate for this purpose. Um, maybe, I don't know, uh, I can do something with the GPIO ports from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's, I think it's worth to have a look on it. If you are in, in this topic, in this area, and familiar with alternatives, 
I would be uh, interested to hear your recommendations or ideas uh, how this can be improved. So performance is still in topic, but uh, it's it's clear the the how should I say what the bottleneck is? It's the interface here. Nevertheless, it works. And let's jump right in into a short demonstration. Ah, one thing first, uh, just to get you know about the arrangement here, what I have on the desk. So again, those are the motors. The motors are controlled uh, by this tiny microcontroller. This is a TNC 4.0. Those things are really impressive. They are tiny like a thumb, but they're running on 600 megahertz and have one, uh, up to one megabyte of RAM memory. Uh, they connect to the stepper drivers, the stepper drivers to the motors, and as you can see, the stepper motor is attached to such a lever, and the lever, uh, when turning, uh, presses here tiny switches, and those act as so-called limit switches. If you are familiar with 3D printing, this is a quite common concept. This is necessary to limit the movement. So once the lever uh, reaches its uh, uh, extreme positions, the, the trigger is, is triggered and indicates to the software that this limit is reached and, uh, and prevents that it's uh, overdone, so to say. If you can imagine if this is, would be a huge motor inside a, a, a real cabinet, a person sitting inside, you don't want to, to move the motor uh, for in, eternity and, and uh, spin you upside down. So you will really want to have uh, limit switches to make sure that movement is in certain areas. It's also a kind of security feature. Then you have here a couple of LEDs lighting, because the uh, uh, the actual real cabinet, the deluxe cabinet, in all days had some some lights uh, that indicated several stages, and I also interfaced those those lights with the emulated software. We have an altitude indicator. We have an indicator for the start button. This lights up once you have credits uh, based on the coin that you uh, thrown in. Then there's a lock-on indicator which is related to the gameplay. If you are in the game and uh, and um, you you on an opponent and uh, have a lock on him to to get ready for a missile, then this gets uh, light up. And there's also a danger light. So set that and you understand this hardware setup. Let's have a look on a short demonstration how this works. But don't be too disappointed if you see a uh, slow performance. So let's load the the uh, afterburner uh, ROM. So I need to go to the location on my hard disk where I have the ROM file. This is here. Load Archive. And yeah, I had to change, make modifications to the main 2003 software. So I, I modified main 2003 and made my own version. So it's main 2003 TOS, which is the one that I implemented the serial interface for the moment. And we are already starting. And as you can see, the very first thing, and this is already the part of the emulated game, is the motor warm-up. A motor warm-up is basically what I explained before. So the motor gets moved to its extremes until the, the limit switches triggers. And this is done by, by the software to, to, make, to understand where the limits are and uh, also to make sure that the limit switches are in place and working because, as again, this is a security uh, feature also. So it already uh, checked out the one axis, the horizontal axis, then it goes to the vertical axis, moves the motor to the extremes until the, the, the uh, limit switches get triggered. As you can see, now we have an indication that all four directions are good, indicated as good. So the, the check uh, was successful. And, and this, what you just uh, experienced right here, is already controlled by the emulated game. So this motor moved not, not, not because I triggered something or not because of the microcontroller here. The microcontroller is more or less a kind of Translator, uh, if you like, uh, forwards, uh, gives, gives the information back and forth. But the real control is, is taken at the emulated game. Uh, there's one exception to this rule uh, when it comes to security. I come to that back later. So, uh, in the meantime, already the game, uh, the real game screen came up. And as you can see, there's uh, low frame rates. Not really enjoyable, not really playable, but as I said before, the, the bottleneck here is the serial interface that needs to be replaced with something that is more up to the task. As you can see right now, we already have a lock on the screen in the emulated game, and uh, and while we have the, the lock on the screen, we also see the lock uh, uh, LED light here is on. Now it get, gets off, and now we have an audio warning, so the lights work uh, pretty well. And now let's 
throw in a coin to get a credit. And as we done, I don't have a credit, now we have a start indicator, so the start button lights up. And now let's go into this again. Let's press the start button. And if you're familiar with uh, Afterburner, then the, at, at the beginning you start up with your with your plane from this huge carrier. And when the carrier starts from the car uh, when the plane starts from the carrier and accelerates, then this acceleration is uh, how should I say um, the G forces are emulated. Uh, by by moving the vertical posi uh, position of of the cradle of the of the player in an extreme, so the player gets pressed uh, back in the seat, like it would be the case if if uh, real acceleration is, and so the G forces are emulated. So once once the the plane is leveled out and up in the sky, and you can also can see that the vertical axis gets leveled out in the in the center. And I think I get control over my plane in a couple of seconds here. And when I go now to the, I move, uh, make a right turn, extreme right turn. As you can see now, the the horizontal axis goes to the extreme. And now let's change the turn, go in the opposite direction. And as you can see, also the motors turns in the ex other extreme. Maybe we can send her out again, and let's let's climb up a bit and then we see the other axis again and so on. So, and really this is controlled by the original software from 1987. It takes control over actual hardware and I find such stuff just just amazing. I'm, I'm uh, uh, impressed and amazed every time how, how old stuff and new stuff can work together to, to get some new experiences. So I'm um, basically I'm done with the demonstration. There's one thing left. It's about security. Of course, this is not a trivial thing. If if we have really big motors uh, attached to some uh, big cabinet with the person sitting inside, this is really a security issue, and we need to make sure that there can nothing uh, happen. Uh, and one one uh, part of the concept is these limit switches, but in the old days. Uh, the control over limit switches in the service issues was in, in the software that is emulated. So, however, the emulation can stuck, can be paused or whatsoever. And, and this is a no-go if this is paused that the, uh, for security reasons it is no longer checking for these uh, security uh, things. And because of that, uh, these security features are duplicated in the microcontroller. So, in other words, even if our emulation gets, gets hung up, or stuck or paused or whatever, then the microcontroller checks and makes sure that the micro switches, when triggered, will stop the motors. And there's also a security hold, uh, which is this button here below. And once this gets triggered, uh, also the, the motors not just stopped, but they also get uh, de energized, which basically means that the axis get free. So a motor, that, an instead motor that uh, just got, got hold, has a strong holding torque, which means. If, if you, uh, how should I say, if, if something is um, um, blocked or, or uh, clamped in by the motor, it, it will not get freed. But the, the, the um, emergency stop will de-energize the motors and the holding torque is immediately off, which means uh, the, the motor axis can move freely and so uh, no damage will occur. So these security features are are doubled inside the microcontroller for exactly those reasons. Great, so I, I hope you found this little demonstration interesting. So basically this is a successful proof of concept. It's uh, absolutely possible, doable, to somehow hook in into MAME and, and the old software and take control of the new one. And this is a basic foundation for motorized cabinets based on emulated games. Uh, as again, uh, of course, the, the bottleneck has to be flattened out with some reasonable replacement. I have, need to have a look on that and find something. Uh, and besides of that, of course, as I already said, the, the motors and the, and the, and the stepper drivers can be basically replaced with any bigger ones. If you have any ideas, recommendations, I would be glad to get your comments down in the video comments section uh, here and uh, hope you found this interesting and see you next time.